Thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a look at what is connectivity, or as I call it, a hello world approach. So hello worlds are always a good way to start learning about something, right? That's the typical approach used when learning how to code or program. What about connectivity? So before we get into the actual hello world to learn about something basic about connectivity, what exactly is connectivity? So in discussion with customers and multiple engineers, I've, I've typically found that the term connectivity is kind of nebulous and sometimes hard to explain. Does it mean I can't connect a SQL server? Does it mean I can't connect to analysis services? What about a website like SharePoint or reporting services? The answer is yes to all of those. It is a fairly broad term. There's a lot of aspects to it and you can easily get lost in the details. So in our group, when we troubleshoot issues, Usually when we talk about connectivity, we're referring to trying to connect to SQL Server itself. So let's start there. When troubleshooting issues for any topic, a good way to try and approach something is to see how, do we, how can we reproduce something? Because if I can reproduce it, then I can back it out and explain what's going on. So for our inability to connect to SQL Server, what's an easy way to reproduce such an issue? Like how do we stop being able to connect to SQL Server? Well, how about we turn off SQL Server? <laughs> or we can turn off the machine that it's running on. This assumes, of course, that you have SQL Server installed. Another way you could do it is try to connect to a server name that doesn't exist. So just a bogus name that you can think of. For the cases of this video, we're going to actually stop SQL Server because I want to walk through some of the aspects of that in case you're not familiar with it. So on a machine that you installed SQL Server, there's going to be a tool called SQL Server Configuration Manager. I have it pinned to my taskbar here, but you can also go to Start and type in SQL Server, and you'll see SQL Server Configuration Manager, assuming you have it installed. We'll say yes. And in here, it's going to go to SQL Server Services, and you'll see all the services on the machine that are installed. In our case, we want SQL Server. A couple things to note here is you'll see MS SQL Server in parentheses. That's called the instance name. MS SQL Server is always used for the default instance. You can have a named instance, which will have a separate name to it other than MS SQL Server. Um, you'll also see the state that we're running in, is whether it's running or stopped or paused or whatnot. And then we'll see the start mode uh, and the logon account and the process ID or PID that is running the server. Okay. So for our case to stop it, all we have to do is right click and say stop. And then once that's stopped, we will see the state listed as stopped, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So SQL Server is just a Windows service. So we can go into Configuration Manager, Services, Service, Standard, S, and we'll see it listed here as well. And we'll notice that it's not running because we already stopped it. Um, but we can also come into here and just say start or stop. Also, because it's just a Windows service, we can go to a command prompt and do this as well. So in our case, it's already stopped. So let's go ahead and start it. So in here, we'll do net start MS SQL Server. Now, I know MS SQL Server is the service name. You can get that from going into the service and looking at the actual service name itself. So for a named instance, this isn't going to be just the name of the instance itself. It'll be like MS SQL dollar sign and then the instance name. So you always want to go here and verify what it is if you're doing it with this approach. So we'll go ahead and start it. And it will tell you that the service is starting and that it was started successfully. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and stop it again. Sometimes this will take a second or two. I don't know why it's taking so long, so we'll just do that. And then we'll verify here if it's stopped. So it still says stopping. So we'll go ahead and move on from this because it will stop at some point because it'll time out. So uh, now that we've got SQL Server stopped, we can try to connect to it. And you wrote your application code to connect to SQL, right? All right, don't worry about that. It's much simpler to test a connection. So this is where a tool called a UDL file comes into play. So a UDL is just a very easy and basic way to test connectivity to a data source. 
This is typically one of the very first steps when trying to validate if we can connect to a server or a data source. If the UDL test works, but the application is not working, something else is going on. So to create a UDL file, I'm going to go to a remote machine uh, to test this. Um, and here we'll go to new and we'll say text document. You'll notice here that it has the .txt on here. That means we're showing file extensions. If you don't see .txt, you're going to want to show your file extensions within Windows itself. And here we're going to rename it to test.udl. Get rid of the .txt. We'll say yes. The minute we do that, you're going to notice that the icon itself changed. And if you didn't see the icon change, that means you didn't change, you didn't have, you weren't showing the file extensions, which means that your file is actually test.udl.txt. So just change the file extension, get rid of the .txt, and the icon will change. Okay, so when we double click on that, we're going to see the data link properties. In here, typically what I'll do is just go ahead and enter in the server name, choose Windows Auth, and just hit Test Connection. I don't need to specify a database for the purposes of just testing if I can connect. All right, so let me go ahead and add in my server name for the server that I had SQL running on. Again, here, if you wanted to just see what the error looked like, you can just put in a bogus name like my awesome server or something. So, but I'm going to put in my server name. All right, and then when I do test connect, it's going to sit there for a minute while it times out. So while it's sitting there, uh, let me talk about, I mentioned a term data source before. So the data, a data source is just a term used to indicate a data server that we can grab data from. SQL Server would be a data source for an application. Analysis services could also be a data source for an application. It just means where we are getting that data from. So a text file could also be a data source. All right, so we got our error. And if we look at it, it says basically SQL Server does not exist or access denied. Not very surprised by this because we turned it off, right? So it's trying to reach out to that name and to try and connect to SQL Server, but it's not getting a response. So it timed out and said, hey, we can't find it. Okay, so default, when we open up a UDL file, it's going to default to a provider called Microsoft SQL or the Microsoft OLEDB provider for SQL Server. And if we go to the provider tab, we can see that. There's multiple providers installed on your machine. Some are there by default, others happen from installing another piece. So the error SQL Server does not exist or access denied is a typical error we see from the default provider. This ships with Windows. It's very old. We don't recommend customers use this provider because it's old, um, but it still works and we can still test with it. Um, it doesn't require you to have anything else installed. Um, so the later, one of the later providers that are available for SQL Server is called SQL Server Native Client, or known as Snack. Uh, 10 or 11 dictate the version that it is, so 11 is for SQL 2012. Um, and we'll notice when we choose that provider, the connection tab changed. Different providers may display different views of the connection tab. Um, so in this case, we can do the same thing though. So let me put in the server name. We'll choose Windows Auth, and we'll do Test Connection. And again, this is going to sit here and, and wait for a second. So uh, one thing to realize and why you want to use maybe the later providers is sometimes the error messages are going to be better. Uh, we've tried to clean those up over time to make them more understandable for customers. And uh, sometimes they can actually really help us uh, when uh, trying to troubleshoot certain aspects of this. Okay, so we did get a different error message this time. This time it's telling us name pipes provider could not open a connection to SQL Server. So in essence, it's the same thing. It's just wording it a different way. And we'll talk at a later point about uh, like name pipes versus TCP versus whatever protocol is being used. For right now, just understand that we timed out trying to log in, which is indicated above. And the reason is we just couldn't connect to SQL Server. So you have uh, seen your first connectivity error. So congratulations. Um, and as you get exposed to other scenarios, you'll go through techniques on how to identify and resolve these kind of errors that you see. This was more of just an introduction to show you what connectivity is um, and maybe even how you can repro something. So you'll get better as you go uh, through more of these and become familiar with the tool sets that you use.